Kelsey, how are you today? I'm fantastic. Anytime I get to be with another person from the DMV area, Arthur, you know I'm happy. I have good vibes, positive vibes, and again, just blessed and happy to be here with you. First time on the show, so I feel like I finally made it. So, Mom, I made it. I made it on my show. <laughs> Look, you ain't got to butter me up, right? I always want to talk to people from the area as well. You see, I got my Southwest sweatshirt on, straight from the museum. Right. I next, next time we want to go together, get the moco for you, get the socks yes. as well. Yes. <laughs> I was like that. Um, it's funny, we're talking about our fits right now. You host the show for the Washington football team called The Fit. What has yeah. it been like, you know, in 2020 during the pandemic, you know, the Washington football team um, hired you to host its digital platforms. Talk about some of them for us. Yeah, well, I'll tell you again, being from the DMV area, you know, you dream of working for the football team here because we're a football city and a football town, but to actually be doing it off there, like, I'm truly blessed. Like, it's just me walking in my purpose. And so now to work for such a storied franchise, I love it. And what a time to join when the team gets the first Black team president mm -hmm. in National Football League history, when the team hires Jennifer King and she's the first Black mm -hmm. assistant coach in National Football League history. And I just feel like I'm being a part of this greater story. And it's just so great to share those stories and talking about being from the area, right? As yeah. Yeah, you know, a every, every, time, every time somebody throws the accent in there, I feel a little bit more at home. I feel a little bit more comfortable. Look, we're at home. We're at home and it's great because I hope people We'll see like you know you can be from the area and make it in the city and again I know things about the team growing up here and getting to watch the team that others wouldn't know I know about the culture and how it's blended into the football team right I know what it is to really love this team go to places and watch games and really know how this team has impacted the city you know I remember I was talking the other day with the resident of Ward 8 author they were saying how they remember the Daryl Green days and how Daryl Green was that athlete that would go into the city and be there for them yeah. I'm able to talk to that right and they trust me because I'm from here, right? I know it like unlike any other, you know? I know what it is to watch the football games and have my chicken wings and mumbo sauce out there. Like, I know <laughs> what it is to like not mute DC and celebrate the wins after, you know? And I'm one of those people out there. I want a parade in DC. So hopefully, we, hopefully we, that's We're gonna get it. Look, Riverboat <laughs> Ron, Riverboat <laughs> Ron, Chase Young, you know, how, you know how he gets down, right? Uh, and I like the signing with the Ryan Fitzpatrick as well. You know, but yeah. you know, we're talking we're talking about some of the greats just now, Daryl Green. Well, right? we're going back. And that's back, what way back. franchise has, Arthur. Like it's it's that storied franchise why I'm so excited to be a part of this franchise and team. And what a time to join the NFC. You should have introduced me as Kelsey Nicole Nelson, a part of the NFC East Division champion Washington football team. Let's, 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 the team. let's, 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 let's run it back. Let's run it back. <laughs> let's just listen in with K and, and Kelsey Nicole Nelson of the Washington football team, who also happen to be the NFC East champions. They almost took down uh, uh, Tom Brady and the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And you were able to document all of that as part of the digital broadcast team. And you guys are soaring on social media. What's it been like? It's been amazing. Like, look, to join the team and then the team just wins social media team of the year from Fox Sports, which of course, I think I'm a good luck charm, but no, props to the team for doing this. It's been so much fun. And the team has just been innovative. My whole role, my digital role with the Washington football team, I'm a part of the Unfiltered series. It's something brand new. And essentially, we wanted to give fans a glimpse into the team off the mm -hmm. football field, right? We've been asked for transparency. We want to know what these guys are like. And so my show, The Fit, talks about culture and fashion. And as we know, a lot of athletes have this. This is why we like to watch them in their pregames, right? When they're stepping into, um, when they're getting ready to change into the locker room. And then also when they're leaving. And, you know, we talk about number 99, Chase Young, the guy from this area. Fashion is a part of the DMV area, right? It goes into who we are, who we're bred to. And I think our fashion system is unique and then on the life I get to talk about their life outside of football right so again these guys are more than just the games they play we like to see them more than just Sundays and Thursdays right we like to see them more than Monday nights we like to know who they are what do you like to do how did you get into football let me tell your story like in one of my favorite episodes of talking with Jimmy Moreland author he's telling me how he got fast because he used to chase rabbits in the sugarcane fields I was like Jimmy wait you did you did what he gotta be from the deep <laughs> south he gotta be <laughs> I knew that here. I was like, well, I, could, I mean, chasing a rabbit, like that's what you guys did for fun. But it's those type of stories that I like, you know, we're talking with Tress Way that how much of a fan of The Bachelor and Bachelorette he is, right? So I get to even intersect pop culture into sports. And I think, again, these guys are more than just athletes and it's been fun. So being a part of the social team has been great. We get to have fun too on the TV show and, you know, implementing the social measures. Like I get to work with Fred Smoot, you know, we get to talk about, you know, Nate, you out and everything Smoothie. else. 
<laughs> so so talk so what are some of your your favorite segments you talk about being more than an astronaut and i love that phrase because athletes are just that this day and age you know right. we're entrepreneurs we're entertainers we're doing everything business ceo into podcasting so who surprised you the most who really is more than an athlete and you you didn't know that you know as as you saw them playing on the field but when they came on the show they surprised you yeah you know that's such a great question and i feel like every episode author i learned something new about the guys but i like cam curl and i like cam curl because he was they were like before i interviewed him you know you're gonna have to really work to get him to open up he's more quiet and soft-spoken but he opens up still a bit shy but he opens up on the show you know he's like i don't like seafood and i'm like wait you know you came to a team in washington you know <laughs> in Maryland, and you know like seafood is our staple like especially a girl like me take him down to the wharf take him down to the shrimp boat <laughs> get him some crabs <laughs> national harbor there you go. So it was great and then to see the season that he had arthur cam curl stepped up showed up and showed out i got to talk to his dad and then his dad tells me the story of, well, he doesn't like seafood because he learned it was like something about how the shrimp poop or like when you're eating shrimp, it's like, yeah, it was a crazy story. And I was like, wait, what? He, he's well, like, don't yeah. get me started on that cinnamon toast shrimp tails now. Well, and look, <laughs> we build up a cinnamon, right? So right, 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 right. It was great stories like that that I love. When the new guys come to the team, getting to be one of the first faces that they see and introducing them to Washington football teams. You know, there's so many I could go on. We'd be here all day if I went through my right. favorite part, Arthur, for every single interview. But it's just those unique tidbits. Like I love, everyone loves Chase's episode. You know, he's like, I have the best drip on a team. And yeah. he's more fun to Washington, right? He's confident on the football field saying, Tom, I want Tom Brady. But he's also representing his culture. He talked about the importance of New Balance culture um, in the PG County area and just so much more. And we love that. Again, we love that you know, from these guys. I love how the Fit Show became like a fashion. It became a fashion kind of competition between the guys. That, Ultimately, we gave Morgan Moses the crown. He has a vault. Arthur. I saw the shoe game. I saw Morgan Moses' shoe game. Who shoe vault, Arthur? Like, who are you? But it's so cool to see that and to see how hard work pays off. Thomas Davis having Jordan sneakers galore, right. you know, delivered every week to his house. Like, I love that part. And it's also great for me because I'm so used to just talking X's and O's and providing the game analysis. I get to kind of show my fun side, you know, and again, show a different side of the guys. So it's been fun. I hope the fans continue just to like and support the show. What, Washington football team, old school versus new school. I would love to see Clinton Portis, right? Southeast Jerome and his all of his alter egos going on the fit versus a Chase Young or a Morgan Moses, and then we do the versus battle of the fifth. Who do you think will win as far as Clint oh Portis, God. who was so flamboyant and did it his own way, versus a <laughs> Chase Young and the versus of the fifth? I, you know, you just gave us an idea because I absolutely love that. And look, it's hard because Chase does have his own fashion. We saw that big blinged out W chain that he rocked, you know, the nice bags that he rocks. And then you talked about Clint Portis and just his impact, and again, a guy that was unapolog unapologetically himself. Absolutely. Oh, that's a good one. And those are two fan favorites, are there? I don't know. I feel like that one would be like neck and neck. I might give Chase the edge just because he's playing now. Just because he's playing now. And you know that's going to play a factor into it. But uh, Clinton is just, I mean, Clinton's Clinton Portis, right? There, I mean, nothing else needs to be said. Drop my in the tweet. <laughs> period as they say <laughs> you know and you get, to, you get to work alongside some of the greats fred smoots and some of these other great washington football team players formerly of the redskins yes. um, have been you know working alongside you in that building yeah but going back this year last year 2020 was the year of inclusion not just diversity but inclusion including right. you know uh, Jennifer King, the first full-time assistant coach, Black female assistant coach. Yes, yes Black girl magic in the building. <laughs> black girl magic. We, we, we talk about Julie Donaldson also in the broadcasting space and the first full-time broadcaster in the booth. Who are some of the women who really inspired you? You know, I love this question because there's so many author women that just inspired me to be where I am today and still inspire me to every day just continue my journey. But, you know, you talked on too. I get to work, like you said, for the first woman in the NFL broadcast booth. That's my boss. Like, again, a part of history. Jennifer King, I had her early on my show, right, when she first was a coaching intern for the team. And just to see how she has grown and now to be working for the Washington football team together, just talking about sometimes, again, how manifest 
manifestation and stuff happens. And then her role has just been so magnificent to see all the glory she's getting, all the shows she's on, because it shows black women and women of color what they can do and that we are more than just women. We are women in sports and do not put us in a box or a silo because we can do so much. We can do that and so much more. Right. And so I think those two continue to inspire me every day because of their story. You know, look at people like Robin Roberts, you know, Cindy Brunson, Jamel Hill, Carrie Champion. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Elle Duncan, like there's so many women that just make me say, well, I mean, Doris Burke talking about being a goat. Like, <laughs> love her, you know, and it just shows you every day that there are women in this field and there are women making noise. You know, my idol is Oprah. And Oprah is just talking about someone who knows how to interview and just does it with style and grace and knows how to command an audience, right? So there's so many I learned from just growing up and I take tidbits from so many. And again, there's one I even see on social media author every day that just like inspire me. And if you can't tell, I'm positive energy, positive vibes. And that's oh, what I build off of, right? And I like to just learn new things and see new things because you know, I'm always learning myself. There's always the growth process, but I'm just thankful for the trailblazers before me. You know, I believe strongly that we stand on the shoulders of giants to whom much is given, much is required. Um, and that's what I feel like. So I learned from them, but also it's why I like to give back. You know, so many of these women poured into me and who I am today. And now I'm pouring into the next DB. I'm pouring into the next Cindy Brunson and the next Jamal Hills of the world because they're coming up quickly behind us. And again, it's making sure that we have diversity and inclusion, as you said, in media and in sports. My favorite quote from my mentor, James Brown, diversity wins, inclusion matters. Mm, shout out DB, shout out JB, <laughs> shout out Jamel Hill. The All list right. goes on and on <laughs> of the GOATs. Literally, you have so much glow and you have so much passion for sports and broadcasting. You know, I see a little bit of that Carrie Champion in you. I see the L. Duncan side <laughs> as well. NABJ, the National Association of Black Journalists, is a yeah. great resource. We met there. We know each other through yeah. that cohort. What is some of the advice from the mentors that you just mentioned that you may have gotten from there or since then? Yeah, you know, I think one of the best pieces of advice I've gotten is to know you belong. You know, more than often and too often, sometimes we are the only one in a room. And that might make you feel uncomfortable at first, but know you are there for a purpose. And I'm big on using your platform for your purpose. And again, to just know you belong, know that you've done the work to get there. Do not let anyone belittle you or make like you shouldn't be there or make it like you had a weird way of getting there. Again, we have all have our own journey. But to be comfortable in your own skin and know you belong is one of the greatest things that you can do. And I think that's what I'm so thankful my mentors told me. And to just never be uncomfortable, you know? And again, you might be the only one, but it doesn't mean that you're alone. You have allies with you, you have great resources, like you said, like NABJ and others that will stand behind you and support you through thick and thin. And this is why it's so important to find a mentor. Arthur, this is why I'm so thankful to, to co-lead the NABJ Sports Task Force Mentorship Committee. Because go. it's vital, especially as people of color, as women, as any minority, that you find allies and an advocate for you. And that's exactly what a mentor will be for you. And so again, I'm just thankful that these people have poured advice to me, still pour advice to me. I have to shout out my mentor, you know, Mark Gray. I was just talking with him and he texts me. He's like, hey, Kelsey, we need more black women in baseball. I'm like, Mark, you're completely right. And he said, hey. We've been so saying it for years that. too. We've been saying it for years. <laughs> together. And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to. You know, I've covered the Nats here, covered the Orioles, but I don't get to do as much baseball coverage. But you know what? challenge myself do some more because he's right we do need more representation in baseball baseball is another sport where you have a lot of people of color you know playing the game you know so you have a lot of people from the latin american countries we do i think need more blacks in baseball too right not just on the media side but another is also a push for that but it's challenging yourself this is why arthur this is why i challenged myself when i was in college to work for nascar didn't get to see many faces like mine associated with NASCAR, but it was something out the ordinary, something I challenged myself myself to. And it was something that made me really realize I was walking my purpose. If I, was, I was like, if I could be a black woman working with NASCAR, getting a chance to sit in on Sirius XM NASCAR radio as a black woman and have people listen to me, then that means again, that I'm comfortable in my own skin, that others are comfortable with me and that I'm walking my purpose and doing my path that God intended me to. I'm a strong believer of I can do all things through Christ. But again, just seeing a problem, finding a solution to it and knowing that you can be that bridge of what you don't see, what you don't see. Seeing is truly believing. And I'm so glad that you're preaching from a woman in baseball. If you're listening out there, if you like baseball, if you know baseball, even if you don't know baseball. Open days coming up. Opportunities, right? Because you just never know. Opening day is coming up for baseball. And like you said, when Black women, when women get into those rooms, they are the only ones there. 
You've already broken into these spaces though. What do you say to the young women who are trying to break through and get in? What was it like for you and, and what are you gonna pass along? Yeah, you know, for me, my story is a bit different because I didn't have your conventional media path. You know, I went to the University of Maryland, did a bunch of internships in college trying to get my name out there, had my own blog. A funny story, my blog was called Sports Vixen. <laughs> Because oh, I was trying to give a name to women in sports, and it was funny because everyone's like, and I had I was writing, and then I had different women writing for my blog, different sports stories. So I worked at University of Maryland Radio, so our, our our station. I did music, I did sports, I wrote for the newspaper. You know, got involved as early as I could. But I think for me, my journey was really just networking. Right. Starting in a big market like DC is getting your name out and showing people that you have a hard work ethic and that they can trust you. So basically, making sure that I was credible. And this is where the internships play into into tune because when you do so many internships if you're doing it right you meet a lot of people and you meet a lot of people that can vouch for you and again when you work in a big city you have to find when you're a small fish in a big city you have to find a way right to you have to find a way to find your Nemo I'll use that right you're fine you're finding Nemo so for me it was just it was a lot of hard work, <laughs> a lot of just proven dedicated hours, and just a lot of picking people's brains. And it wasn't easy, again, because I'm trying to start a big market. So I started covering out high school sports, Arthur. Luckily, the DMV area, we have pretty good high school sports. Top well. notch, the best in the country. Men Football, hand. basketball, line it up. We can talk We can talk about it all day. Rest in peace, Elgin Baylor. We, we got it, right? Callers from you the know? DMV. So happy you shot the Elgin Geller. I mean, just great examples of greatness in the DMV area. Shout out to In the Water, too. Some of y'all just got caught on to in our the water and the ballers that we bring. And but the women's doctor coming out soon as well. Else. And this is what's so great about living. And that's why for me, I wasn't going to leave the DMV author because I'm in the best place in the world. Why would I leave to try to come back? And so for me, then after college, I was like, wait, you know, I'm applying to these jobs. Some of them are in the middle of nowhere. I just didn't see myself in a small market. And again, that's nothing to anybody else that's out there, but that just wasn't for me. You have to truly, again, know yourself and know who you are. And this is why the advice I give is to bet on yourself. So I bet on myself. I stayed in the DC area. I invested in myself. And this is why I tell people, if you want a podcast author, invest in good podcast equipment. I know me and you have had this conversation. Had this conversation <laughs> Go to conferences. Go to a, there's, there's a podcasting conference that comes every year here to DC. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that you can do. You know, reach out to your favorite podcaster, pick their brain. You know, it's like just investing in yourself and believing in yourself. And then I said, how can I make myself stand out? So lo and behold, the next thing I know, I'm going to grad school. Was not originally in the plans. Went to Georgetown grad school. So I got to get name. They have a good sports industry management program. Go through that, love the program. Again, meet industry professionals. And luckily going to two big colleges in this industry and in this area, I got to, I mean, Kevin Blackstone was one of my professors at, right. Right? at Georgetown. I had, we talked about the NFLPA earlier. I had representatives from the NFLPA. You know, I had the vice president of media for the Baltimore Ravens as my professor. So I, again, got to work with a lot of great content a lot of great people, but made a name for myself, starting with interning. And some of these were unpaid internships and then kind of working my way to those entry-level jobs. But I also always did multiple things, had multiple sources mm -hmm. of income, which I think is also very important, especially if you want to be a freelancer. Graduated from Georgetown. Next thing I know, I'm getting into like, you know, just again, smaller jobs, but volunteering author for everything. You know, you, you need a sideline reporter. I didn't play by play, you know, for the Capitol Classic. Like I was literally doing any and everything that I could, raising my hand, taking the train late at night, you know, trying to just find a way to get out there. And I think for me, it was just doing lots of repetition, meeting the right people that I kind of found my way and made a niche where then people started recommending me and people started reaching out to me for opportunities. So again, bet on yourself. Believe in yourself, invest in yourself, and opportunities will come from you. But again, your work ethic is the best, best, best thing that you can have to get others to believe in you and want to invest in you. You do so much. You're involved in so many activities, but you also invest in the communities around the D.C. area, yeah. not only with sports, not only with podcasting and broadcasting and media, but also education, you know, can you talk about some of the organizations that you have invested in and even started? Yeah, of course. So yeah, I'm, education is big to me. You know, it's 
it goes back to my, my Oprah Winfrey, you know, my favorite quote in the entire world, education is the key to unlocking the world, a passport to freedom. I end every single email with that quote. And so a little bit about my story. My parents moved to the DMV area from Mississippi, knowing that they were going to have me because they wanted me to be able to get a good education. And of course, with a good education, they knew more opportunities would be afforded to me. So they moved to Montgomery County, Maryland. If you know about Montgomery County, Maryland, they have a great public school system. Lo and behold, I go through the MCPS school system, end up at Maryland and then Georgia. Town. Of course, lots of hard work. You know, I went to, I didn't have any tutors or anything fancy. It was really just me putting work in to grind and be the best that I could be. But I'm big into education. And one of the things I started is books breaking borders, books to end educational bankruptcy, because there is a divide, especially in black and white children. And as we know, in the third grade, they're starting to separate us and no thinking they know our trajectory and so many kids even now today are getting just passed through the school system Arthur I meet kids in high school that can hardly read the instructions so how are they going to be able to do the classwork and usually those children that are that are being left behind look much like me and you right they have lots of melanin and think about it schools are just trying to get you through because they have a new crop coming in the next year that's not to say all teachers but there are some people that feel that pressure and so for me I wanted to make sure our children our babies aren't just like that and so for me when I saw the divide in reading level right and you need to be able to read to do anything in life and I don't even mean just a job you need to be able to read instructions to build something you need to be able to read tweets like you need to just be able to read in general and essentially this program it's been so great we build basically portable libraries for different so partner with the boys and girls club of them of greater Washington area um, and we've given free books and it's all come from donations and now obviously because of technology we haven't switched to ebooks and kindles and all those fancy things because so this is how kids are reading I'm also involved um, with the most valuable kids organization right and this is a group that it's not necessarily education based but we work with education nonprofits and we give them sporting tickets to games and concerts so of course this is pre-covid but I mean that's actually how I got my first ticket to go to a sporting event I got a free ticket because I was part of a program my family we couldn't go to games right my family didn't have money like that my parents are always working um you know and trying to provide now, now you're paying it forward you have to you have to you know one of the biggest things is when you're put in a position of power you have to make sure you reach back and give back you know be good do good i preach that all the time and a village is only as strong as its slowest member a village is only as strong as its slowest member but yeah. to make a strong village Every village needs to be on the same playing field and level playing field. I think that's what we need to do. And I'm a product of my village, right? I'm a product of Montgomery County, Maryland. I'm a product of Plum Guard Community Center. She I'm gonna a plug that MoCo. She gonna uh, plug that MoCo. <laughs> like, no. And I think you know, there's a stigma, right? People think all of a sudden because you're from MoCo that you know you just had it. No. Believe me, there's many people that will tell you it's not like that. Okay. Many of us had to work to get out of our situations. And again, I'm a product, I went to Boys and Girls Club. I went to about eight different daycares as a kid. I'm a product of kinder care. I'm a product of Poppy. I'm a product of, you know, I can name all the different ones, but so many mentors and people poured into me mm -hmm. and made sure that I was able to succeed. You know, my teachers that, you know, pushed me harder to say, Kelsey, you know, you can do this better. You can do that better. You know, my yearbook advisor, Jane Tufano, I mean, so many author poured into me. This is why I'm big on just giving back, working with the Richard Wright Public Charter School for Journalism and mm -hmm. Media Arts. These are our next broadcast professionals. We need to teach them teaching at Doral College um, in Miami. It's, I mean, it's so many great things and I'm giving back to the next generation. And mind you, these students teach me a lot, Arthur, too. Yeah. They're running their own radio station, Slam XM, Slam Radio. I mean, like, how cool the is that today, uh, this XM station? The students today are so bright. The students today are so advanced in technology, right? <laughs> they could almost teach themselves, right? They just need that guidance. And you're talking a lot about the teachers who poured into you, the organizations that have poured into you. Now you're giving back. <laughs> if, I can do, if I can get you to leave one last word of advice, you know, be Kelsey Nicole Nelson, the teacher right now, put on the teaching hat, the educator. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. Give us your keys to success that you're going to pass along to the youth. If they don't listen to anything else. Yeah. Well, hopefully they better be listening because that's what a good teacher would tell you. But if you may be slacked off, you got a text message and you didn't hear everything. You know, one of my favorite things, one of the things I, I did as a child that I won is actually from Karan Butler. And it's called the three D's to succeed. It's dedication, determination, 
um, dedication, determination, and discipline. Three Ds to life. And that's just not just in sports, but this is for anybody. You need to be dedicated, determined, and disciplined to achieve any goal that you want in life. I got this award, I remember, in middle school, and I remember the camera crews coming and, you know, getting surprised by my school in front of everyone. But it meant a lot because that's how I got through life. And I think that's how anybody can get through life. You have to be dedicated to anything that you want to do. Be dedicated to your craft. Be disciplined. Discipline can be hard. Sometimes you might have to turn on that happy hour. You might can't go to that house party. Okay. Um, but you have to be sacrificed. disciplined. <laughs> right, sacrificing. And then you have to be determined because when you're determined, no one can get you off your course or track. Your mind is set on a plan. It doesn't matter what else happens. You're going to reach it. And that's why that's what I would preach. The three Ds to succeed. Shout out to Karan Butler for preaching this. My year. man, former <laughs> wizard. Let's get it. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's call it like it is. Former wizard. Wizard. The days of the wizards. Right? They had the trio, Anton, Karan, and my man, AG Zero, right? AG Zero, our guy Gilbert Arenas. Those were good days. You know, I remember the right. Gilbert and Karan. Oh, you, got, you took me back, Antoine, James, and Dave. Like, we're going to get back there with this friend. Do not fret, all right? It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Just be patient. But, you know, it's that's coming. what it is. <laughs> and I told you, it's not just for children. It's for anybody in life. You need to be disciplined, dedicated, and determined to get wherever you want to go. Because, again, Life has speed bumps and roadblocks and it'll take you places. Originally, Arthur, teaching wasn't in my exact plans. You know, I love to talk with kids and I would do a bunch of speeches and talks, but lo and behold, this is where life has taken me. Now it's a part of my plan, but I'm still obviously on track to be a journalist. But the reason why I love freelancing is because I'm able to have my hands and feet in different things. And I'm not going to be able to be placed in the box. You know, when people say at the end of the day, this is who Kelsey and Nicole Nelson was. I wanted to be a lot of commas because I wanted them to say like, she was a lot of different things and say true to her craft and who she was, but most importantly, gave back to the next generation. Again, I am who I am because so many believed in me and poured into me. And if we want the world to be stronger, it's our young people. They truly are the future. They're going to make important decisions. And really now they're helping to lead movements. I and mean, think about the power of social media and what they're able to do. I remember the school shootings that were just so horrific. And I remember watching young people walk out of their schools to protest right, and boycott, right, for just safer schools, um, and I think, again, I'm inspired by them each and every day, podcasting, I mean, I'm teaching intro to radio and podcasting, but best believe, I learn as much from them as they learn from me, because they're growing up with this, right, they're growing up in this digital age, I'm learning TikTok from them, I still haven't done it yet, y'all, but I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make my first TikTok, I know the dances, but I don't know about I don't know about all of the video, you know, aspects that go into it, um, but you have been so amazing. Thank you so much you. for your time. I'm getting your, you said you, you, you finally made it on my show. I'm getting to talk to you and you're doing, you know, podcasting, you're doing hosting shows, you're teaching everything, right? <laughs> Hyphens, commas. When you see Kelsey Nicole Nelson, just remember, you're going to need more ink, right? You're going to keep writing and keep writing and keep writing, right? Oh, I need to do ink do then, though. Okay, I have to do that for them. Arthur. But it's because, <laughs> I say that all the time, like, never let anybody tell you you can do one thing if I can leave this, Arthur, because I think growing up, you know, they ask you, what do you want to be? And I think you think automatically it has to be one thing. Mm -hmm. It's okay to change careers. It's okay to do multiple things at one time. I think as long as you're dedicated to it and giving you all you've got, again, you can be anything you want to be and more, more than an athlete, more than journalists, I would say for us, Arthur, because we are that and so much more. And also great things come from the DFB. So best believe you can always be all you want and more. <laughs> Just be more, whether it's a, a radio personality, an award-winning broadcast journalist, and now a host for the team, the, the Washington team. football team. NFC East Division Championship winning <laughs> team. Yes, you're speaking it to existence. And again, it can happen. I'm just a young girl from Germantown, a young black girl from Germantown. Germantown, throw it up. <laughs> You know, I've been mean, working for the Washington football team. Is, is that on the subway line? Or? <laughs> Look, you get off at Shady Grove. And is, that what Mata, is, that, is that what Mata official? You know, I don't know if the train goes out there anymore. Red line, and shout out to everybody that lives off the red line. All right, I'm just saying the MoCo line. All right, so go to Germantown if you want to visit it. Shady Grove and do a little bit of driving or hop on the ride on bus because, you know, it's easy to get around Montgomery County. And yeah, you'll experience some great things. <laughs> Whether it's Germantown, or Landover, where the Washington football <laughs> team plays, visit Kelsey Nicole Nelson, listen to her podcast, listen in with KNN, and just continue to follow her because she she's giving the gems. She's in the sports media world. She's broadcasting. She's doing everything. 
Um, and I thank you so much for coming on this show um, and giving us your time. Women's History Month, we're wrapping it up with Kelsey yeah. Nicole Nelson. Thank you. Thank, thank you so, you so much. much. And shout out to all the rock star women. Remember to always give women their flowers. Mm. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> thank you, Kelsey. Thank I appreciate you. it. Magnificent job. Magnificent job. A big fan of yours. Keep up the great work. Keep rocking Southwest and the best to come out of Southwest. And again, just a, you're such a rock star. You are the one of the best and brightest and just show the greatness, Black excellence and the greatness of what we can do as people. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. <laughs>